Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I don't want to make this intro so long, so I'm going to tell you right now, you better hit that subscribe button. You better like, you better share, you better comment this video. Because again, I'm not going to tell you twice. I'm going to be using new products in this tutorial. This is the look I created. I'm going to sound very demanding. I'm just kidding. Anyways, you guys, welcome back to my channel. I created this look using new products, especially using the new Morphe um, Times James Charles palette super gorgeous it look at this boom in the face it's prettier in person i want to make this intro very long again so just be right in again just just let's go so i think i'm gonna be starting with this shade right here um it's a little bit orangey for a transition that's the shade i like to use but there's not really another transition shade so transition shade <laughs> over the lid and blending it out i hope it's not super super orangey like a bright orange from the blending that i'm doing it doesn't really seem like it's that bright orange i didn't take a lot of my brush either just because i want to build up the shade here and the color so let's see what it will look like so the same shade that i applied in my transition i definitely do want to apply it um, on the outer area so on the corner here I'm just going to blend it back and forth and keep it as low as I possibly can in the same position without like going further out or further in just maintain it here and in the line where my crease is so next I'm going to be taking this shadow right here which is the one next to this orangey one and I'm taking the Morphe M518 this is a new blending brush that I picked up at Ulta recently and I've actually been liking it it's fluffy but it's not super um, thick or big it's just like perfect enough to blend in certain areas and then I'm going to be applying this shadow in the same area where I blended the transition shade but this time instead of blending in the same area I'm going to be blending upwards just in the outer area so basically I'm blending outwards like this and I want to be defining it but with blending it outwards just this. now I want to deepen the outer area even more and one last shadow that I'm going to be taking is this brown one so I'm basically using this three right here and I'm taking a Morphe M514 brush this is also a new brush it's similar to this one here that I used previously but much smaller I feel like this one's blend for more detail in specific areas um, again just starting off with some light shadow not picking up too much and dabbing first in the outer area and then blending it back and forth when it comes to darker shades I do recommend picking up a little and then working your way through with building up the coverage I don't want to say coverage because like foundation but building up the intens intensity and the depth of the look now moving on to the pop of color that i'm going to be applying on the lid um so i'm going to be trying this yellow right here and i'm going to be taking a morphe m167 brush also new i'm not used but i like it so far i mean it's not that i haven't used it i've used it like once or twice and i like it so far but anywho so this is a very bright um yellow now when it comes to this color i don't want it to be so intense i just wanted to just give it that extra little pop of color you know what i mean so i'm going to be applying it all over the lid and i'm not going to be so specific and so defined i'm actually just going to blend it all over and bring it as high as i can and as far as trying to blend it on here. I want to apply concealer because I don't want it to be so precise and so defined. I just want it to be kind of like a wash of color on the lid. In case you get some of that yellow shadow on the brown area, just take one of the blending brushes that you used. It doesn't matter which one it is. Um, but you again want to blend out any yellow that got on the brown. That way you go ahead and diffuse any um, harsh lines and if you need to go in with some yellow you definitely can actually I uncovered that applying it with your finger intensifies the yellow even more so now I'm going to move on to lashes um, I just can't stop wearing Daddy B lashes and instead oh I'm sorry I'm going to be using these I did order a new pair so let's see how that pair works but for now I'm going to be using Instaho remember he just brought me my favorite gummy worms by black forest like these are the best gummy worms so good 
<laughs> it tastes like real juice, like real fruit juice. It's so good. All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and put on the lash. The was at 20. Thank you. Anywho, before I was interrupted, we don't to my lash. You're interrupting me. So now I'm going to move on to moisturizer and using one of my favorite moisturizers is by Amber Elise. Um, it has primer built in it, so it's pretty good. I use it on myself and my clients. I probably told you guys this several times. I don't really videos, but it's so good. I love that it's for all skin types. So prior to um, the moisturizer, I did use this Milani face oil. It's a prep and soothe camellia face oil. Um, this oil is so good, especially during winter season because I tend to get dry in this area. So it's a really good oil. I love the pump because it has like the little thing here. And of course, next I'm going to be going in with my Glam Glow illuminating moisturizer which is my favorite it's like my holy girl i have to have it like if i don't have it i notice a difference um in the consistency of my foundation and face not only just to make it glow and dewy but again it smooths out my canvas and then of course you see my maybelline primer silicone based i go ahead and tap it in my pore area and then i go ahead and bring it up to my nose because i get oily in this area here but again, this is one of my favorite primers along with the professional. They're so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend out my foundation. Out. I'm excited to use the new Kylie Cosmetics um, perfecting powder. Let's see how it works. I just love this Morphe sponge, especially at the very flat edge, because that's where I can blend a concealer foundation close to here. Without having to move any brow product. So concealer is blended out. And I'm going to go ahead and contour. Oh, shit. Ooh, I took out too much concealer. <laughs> well, it is what it is. I want to show off a new brush I got. Um, it's like a dream come true that I finally found out. Found out. <laughs> that I finally found a brush that I've been looking for for so long. Like, no joke. You guys know how I use the stippling um, brushes to blend out my contour? If you watch previous videos and are subscribed to my channel, know that this is my favorite brush to blend out concealer. But I went to Walter and I got a new brush. It's the Morphe M461. Like, look at how much smaller it is and precise. This brush is perfect for my nose blending contour. Like, I cannot express how grateful I am for this brush. If I lose it, I'm going to be so mad because I have to go get another one. But I'm going to get backups because that's just me. But I've been wanting a brush like this for so long. And I've been thinking, like, what brand has made it? And I've looked and I've looked. I think Colourpop had one, but I did not want to risk with buying it. I was thinking, like, it looks small, but potentially could be big like this. But now, this is just, like, the perfect. Look at this. Like, it's so precise. It doesn't, like... This brush is good, but I have to be very careful with blending because that way I don't move the lines. I keep it in their place. But this one here is just like, ah, dream come true. So now the most exciting part is going in with the Kylie Cosmetics um, Perfecting Powder. Let's see how, look, it even still has plastic. Let me see how much it works. She did use more of that flat shader kind of brush. Um, similar to, what are you, something like this, but bigger. I'm not going to put my tutorial, so I'm going to be on the safe side and use this Real Techniques brush, um, setting brush. I'm just going to smooth out this damn wrinkles underneath my eye and see how this works. It's kind of like a yellow banana powder. Let's see if it's translucent as she says and how it works. It's, it's setting, it's setting, it's doing its thing. Okay, it's now building up cakey. Okay, it's just looking really nice. It's not my Charlotte Tilbury powder. I definitely can tell you that for a fact. But it's actually a good powder. No lie. Oh, it's not bad at all. Um, maybe a little bit drying. You know but it's not i'm like built i literally built so much powder on this and it doesn't look cakey now i'm going to move on to the Bretman and color pop 
Collection Blush. This one is in Stop It. It's like an orangey shade. I have not used it on my skin yet. I'm using a Morphe E34 brush. E34 brush. And when I was tapping it, I was watching it on my Snapchat. Um, it did like very buttery. It looks really like an orange red. So hopefully it's not crazy. Red orange. Hmm. Trying to blend it in with my bronzer, but let's see how this is working. It's really pretty, but I'm trying to, hmm, I don't know, blend it in with my bronzer and I'm having a little trouble. Blush is giving me like, I've been in the sun too long. Kind of like that sunburn, even though I don't really get sunburned because I'm a brown biscuit, like a tennis hill. But that's what it's giving me. I don't know how I feel about it with this um, specific look. But it's pretty though. I can tell you that. Maybe for more of a natural kind of look. Um, but anywho, moving on to the eyes. I'm going to be taking a Morphe M432 brush. And I'm going to be taking the dark brown that I used lastly for my outer area. And defining the lash line on here. That I have that bottom lash line defined with the brown. I'm going to go in with the second orangey red shadow and with a pencil brush and this is the Mikasa E310 and then I'm going to blend out any harshness and diffuse that on here and connecting it to the outer area here and then of course after that I'm going to be taking my flat sponge and then cutting out this area here I'm sorry you guys I don't know why I can't stop doing this Cutting out this area and defining it. I just really like how it lifts my eye area on here. Okay, we're making moves. We're getting places. Now I'm going to be taking the... Oh, look what the heck happened here. The Kylie Cosmetics Highlighter and Snow Angel. I don't know how the hell it got dirty. But this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and swatch it on here to show you guys. Maybe you can see that. No, if you can't see it, that was pointless. And it has like champagne, gold, gold champagne, like a little bit of both. But let's go ahead and I'm applying it on the tip of my nose, down the bridge. Ooh. My camera died when I was applying highlighter, but I didn't apply it all fully. So I'm going to give you guys a little whoop whoop. But also I was saying, it does have a lot of fallout when I tap in the brush here. Mm, applying some to the chin. Mm, I don't know how I feel about the highlighter. Um, I'm used to really wearing like gold shades, especially with the wet, wet, <laughs> with the wet consistency. I think I'm just gonna have to apply some setting spray just to kind of make that blend in because yeah, I'm applying excessively so it can blend in the skin and melt because I don't like having a streak of highlighter. I mean, it's pretty, but I don't know for me. What do y'all think? And we'll move on to lips. And I did use this lip combo in a previous video that I posted. You see in the Huda Beauty palette. But this time, I'm going to use a different lip pencil. I'm going to take the MAC Cork lip pencil and outline my lips. Rather than using the ColourPop BFF3. The reason why I love MAC Cosmetics lip pencils is because they're creamy, but they hold their posture, meaning that you can outline anything and it won't budge where, unlike, if you have a very soft, creamy consistency of lip liner, you don't get a such precise line. Like, I mean, it's super pigmented, but you don't get your lines as defined, they kind of budge around, and I'm that person who doesn't like that. Like, just hold your posture, it'll be creamy enough for me to apply, and also pigmented that I can see the shade and the color on. I did first use in the prior video, I don't know how I felt about it, because it was like a fully nude, it was like a peachy nude. But, let's go ahead and apply it. I just feel like on my skin tone, particularly, it doesn't give me like a full nude experience. Like you're not giving me that experience. What I don't like about this satin lip is that it gives me like that butthole 
hair in there. I don't know how to get rid of it. Okay, so with blending it out, it looked pretty. It doesn't look bad. I actually like it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use the gloss Kumquat on top. Because I feel like the gloss is just going to give it everything. I'm going to go ahead and apply some highlighter on my boobs. Just because they're looking mighty cute right now. I don't know why. Probably because I'm gaining weight. Every time I gain weight, my boobies kind of just stand up. So, collarbones. Hi, collarbones. How you doing? I don't know. You see how it looks like... Like, I like that. It's, like, it's a pretty highlighter, like a wet finish. But the shade is not my usual gold. Hey you guys, this is the final look. I'm so in love. I've actually created this look previously on a video for my Instagram. And I knew I wanted to bring it to YouTube. I just didn't know how. Um, because I use multiple colors from different palettes. But I'm so happy that I did um, buy this palette because it incorporates... Similar shades that I used when I created this look initially. And I love it because it's still super neutral with a pop of color. Like the yellow is just like it stands out. But it's not so out there that it makes you feel out of your comfort zone. The browns, I mean, I just love this look. The highlighter, I'm still a little bit like, mmm. I mean, the powder was, um, it didn't get cakey as I was applying it on top, you know, continuously. But it was a little bit drying, so I'm going to have to work more around it. Just because I'm so used to my Charlotte Tilbury powder, and that's like an airbrush, like the best powder I've used. Um, so I'm just going to have to continue using it. The highlighter, the shade, um, is not like my usual gold. Sometimes I tend to just stick to those kind of shades, but I know that I have to step out of my comfort zone sometimes. Like, it's super pretty. It's like a wet consistency. Um, but I just don't like kind of like one streak that you can tell, like, actually have it melt on my skin the combo matte i might not end up wearing it i think just pairing it with the gloss just gives it a really pretty look but on its own i have to think about it um i don't know i just have to give it a try the blush is super pretty but i think i would use this on like a very minimal everyday kind of makeup look kind of like i just got sunburned um it's super pretty super creamy um buildable i like it's super affordable too the palette is great. I don't have um, anything bad about to say. But other than that, I love this look. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video. Turn on your post notifications to get notified when I upload. Don't find me. But anywho, I'll see you until next time.